In today's video, one of the most talked about and hype releases of the year, we're gonna be talking about Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mans Elixir. If you guys wanna know all about this one, then stick around, it's up next. In the past two decades, we're going back to 1995, Jean-Paul Gaultier gave us Le Mans, which was really a neo-fougere that combined a trifecta of lavender, mint, and vanilla, giving us this really cool, uh, different style of fougere fragrance that was modern, elegant, and really, you know, had turning of a fragrance. Pass forward to 2023, we've had many different flankers, and this one genius of a fragrance knows Francis Kurtjean started it all back in 95 with the original Le Mans. Today we're gonna to talk about the latest flanker from this particular lineup. I lost count of how many flankers they've had so far. It's in the dozens for sure. This is going to be the latest 2023 release, Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mans Elixir. Let's see what this one is all about. Now, this particular fragrance, if you're looking at the canister or the can, it's gonna have the ridges. It's gonna be black or dark amber and golden collar. Uh, you're gonna open up, you're gonna see a podium here where your Le Mans can sit perfectly. And of course, again, the ridges, the gold, and this looks to be black, but when you put this against light, it's actually an amber color, like a dark or golden amber of sorts. Quite hard to find this fragrance here in the US. I actually had to source mine from Europe. This is not yet available in the US, so I expect to see this coming through in the next few weeks at your favorite general store or favor this counter at, at that. A little hint here for you guys here to follow the channel, the partner of the channel, FragranceBuy.ca, should have this in stock very soon. So be sure to check the Rare Gems tab and the New Releases tab at FragranceBuy.ca so you guys can secure yourself a bottle if you're looking to do so. However, if you wanna try this fragrance before you buy it, it's available right now at perfume.com. If you guys wanna try this fragrance, go ahead, try it before you buy it. When you love it, you're ready to commit to a full bottle, wait a little longer and pick up a bottle at FragranceBuy.ca. All details below along with codes just for you. So going back to the presentation, gold canister, ridges, you know, black, dark amber bottle, beautiful. They upgraded the uh, the actual puller here. It's gonna be uh, the ring, the puller. It's gonna be a little bigger now, much easier to access the fragrance. Sprays are gonna be beastly with this one. And the introduction, all oh, the introduction. We're gonna get to it right now. So this is the presentation. It looks really nice to be honest with you against all the other flankers. This is definitely one of the nicest looking flankers period. I'm going to keep the ring off the bottle just so we don't have the uh, sound effect, if you will, but the bottle does look incredible. Pricing, I can't give it to you because it's not available in the US, but I'm thinking this is the 125 or the 4.2 ounce bottle. I'm thinking that this is going to be around the 150, uh, 125 to 150 dollar price point, USD that is. <laughs> so as we know, when we look at fragrances these days, brands are giving us less and less information. They're giving us between three to six, maybe eight fragrance notes. Uh, when you look at the website, this fragrance is gonna give you, uh, the, the brand itself is gonna give you a couple notes, lavender, mint, vanilla, benzoin, honey, tobacco, and tonka. To be honest with you, have the blotter, uh, which has a dry down. Um, I have this on skin, I'm actually wearing this today. I'm gonna respray the test strip so I can remind myself of the introduction. So the fragrance opens up almost boozy. It's very captivating. It's gonna have this very elegant, very sophisticated, modern even kind of a vibe to it. I get a little bit of a rubbery kind of a feel. I know it sounds weird. Uh, it's gonna make sense in a second when I start describing what this reminds me of as far as like other fragrances that this resembles but it's gonna open up sweet, warm, spicy, creamy, almost rubbery and nutty at times. Uh, think of walnuts, think of um, you know spices like nutmeg, cinnamon. Because the site won't give you all the notes, I'm telling you what I'm getting here, it is definitely on a sweeter side of things, definitely almost borderline gourmand, so it is a heavier, sweet, not sickly sweet, but definitely heavier on a sweet facet. Even resin is at times as well. Off the top here, the introduction, of course, I've been wearing this fragrance for a few days now. Even the dry down, this is going to be one of the best releases of the year so far. And it's going up against some serious great releases as you guys saw featured here on the channel. In fact, I just put out a video, I think a week, a week and a half ago, talking about the 10 or 12 best releases of the year so far. I'm gonna link it up here, go check out that video. So this fragrance is going up against some seriously good releases this year. But I'm gonna tell you right now, right off the bat, this is going to be definitely one of the best releases of the year so far when it comes to designers. I'd put this in the top five as it stands right now. Still half of the year, we have you know about six more months to go. We don't know what's gonna come next, but I would force, it's in the top five right now, but I, I'm hard pressed to see this falling not in the top 10 of best releases designers of the year so far. It is that good. That rubbery, sweet feeling that I'm talking about, it's gonna resemble fragrances like 
Midnight in Paris from Van Cliff and Arpels, which is basically a leather fragrance. There's no leather noted here, and I'm not really getting a leathery facet. That fragrance goes into a different direction. This is more of an ambery kind of a scent, but you do get that leathery, rubbery kind of effect that you get with um, there's an original fragrance from Bulgari called Bulgari Black, which I'll pop it on, on the screen here so you can see what it looks like. It's long discontinued. I think it was released in 2006. Van Cleef and Arpels, Midnight in Paris. Uh, and of course, available now, if you want to try to compare, would be Prada Luna Rosa Black. It's going to have that kind of a rubbery, almost powdery uh, facet that you get with that fragrance, right with this one as well. So it's going to be similar to that, but more of a sweeter, warmer, spicier, and nuttier kind of a taste and feel to it. As the fragrance develops and dries out on your skin, the darker, more resinous components will really pop in the... Uh, the more prominent or predominant notes, as it were, will come to the forefront. You know, the lavender, that sweet, spicy lavender with the vanilla, the benzoin, um, definitely gonna come through. And I get this ember feel. This is this listed to have tobacco and tonka. The tonka is definitely prevalent here. I don't get much of the tobacco feel. I get more of an ambery feel, and that becomes very apparent as the fragrance warms up to your skin, you know, and it starts to get into the dry down phase of the development. Definitely more of an ambery feel here, sweet, spicy, amber kind of a scent. The notes are blended really nice. There's nothing really sharp or obtrusive or invasive. It's not gonna be one of those scents that you're going to have a hard time wearing or people around you having a hard time smelling because it's gonna be really, really good, really attractive, really seductive, really inviting, uh, warm, cozy. Definitely checks all the boxes in that regard. I, just for my personal taste, wish this fragrance was a little bit more predominant on the tobacco and the, the, the honey, those two notes that they have listed, and of course the lavender, which I love. I wish the lavender, tobacco, and honey were the predominant notes in this fragrance. Instead, we have more of an amber, spicy, sweet, and creamy, almost nutty vibe to the scent, which will bring me to my next point. What does this remind me of? So it's gonna be in the same vein, same wheelhouse as fragrances like Stronger With You, you know, from that line. Uh, the new amber, not so much, because the new Stronger With You amber is more of an oud rose type of a scent with an amber, but if I have to harp back on the original Stronger With You, this is very similar with that nutty, ambery, sweet feel that that fragrance has. So it's gonna be in the same wheelhouse. If you love that fragrance or you like that fragrance, you're gonna enjoy this one. And as this fragrance is drying down here on my skin, the more I wear it, you know, with my few wearings that I've had with this, this also has a slight resemblance with which, you know, is one of my favorite fragrances over the last five years or so, or even a little more than five years. I think it was released in 2016, but anyway, one of my favorite releases over the, fa the past few years, designers, actually it was a Middle Eastern release, so it's kind of hard to, to find, you know, fragrance by Dazi has it in stock every now and again, which is Isimiyaki's Ombre or Noir Ombre. I think this is very similar to Isimiyaki's Noir Ombre. It has a lot of similarities with that fragrance, minus the smokiness that I've had with that fragrance, which I love. This one here is definitely sweeter, creamier, not as smoky uh, or as oriental, if you will as Ombre, Ombre or Noir Ombre from Isimiyaki, but it's going to be in that same vein uh, with that fragrance meeting the Stronger With You uh, original uh, from Armani, kind of a vibe that, that, that I'm getting here as the fragrance dries down. With, of course, the, the, the lavender is present here, but it's not one of those lavenders that will make this very mature. The scent remains very playful, very youthful, very jovial. So if you like fragrances that are definitely in that, in that genre, in that vein, you're gonna enjoy this one for sure. I think this is definitely better suited for someone younger looking for a sweet fragrance to give themselves a good presence, a good, uh, you know, elegant scent. I think this is great for evening wear, dresser occasions, fall and winter for sure, early spring. I would not wear this in the summertime. I think it, it's going to get cloying because of the, the heavy sweetness and resins that it has. I think it could be quite cloying for yourself and for those around you. Unless you're going to wear this, of course, at uh, locations where you have AC going on. It's going to be cooler areas. Uh, some parts of the world, it's actually going into winter now, so this will be perfect for you. But right here in the US, right now, I think it's actually wrong timing for the release of this fragrance because I think it's going to be great for fall, winter, dress your occasions and evening attire for sure. Now, performance was quite good on this. Eight plus hours on skin. If you spray your clothes, 10 plus, which is not bad. Siage is amazing, especially if you spray your clothes like myself. Tremendous scent bubble, tremendous siage. No problems with performance on this one. Definitely great. And it's going to push very solid, project for two plus hours. It's a very strong fragrance, so apply with caution. Or don't apply with caution. If you want to just be you know, radiant and polarizing, Go crazy. Final thoughts on Limol Elixir from the House of Rimpol Gautier. This is a solid release, as I stated above. One of the best designers of 2023 so far. 
no two ways about it, no questions asked, a great release. When you think about the smell itself, it's not, especially if you have a very large collection, it's not gonna be something that's gonna be groundbreaking or never been done before. It's a combination of different things, like I said, you know, Prada Luna Rosa Black, Midnight in Paris from Van Cliff and Arpels, um, you know, Struggle With You, Our Money. Combinations of fragrances, they picked up a few things here and there, a dust of certain things, a smidge of certain, you know, other elements, uh, a pinch of a certain note, combine those particular fragrances with a top of this, a heart of that, and a, and a dry down of this, with the honey, the lavender, and some of the new components that they added to this, that's what you're gonna get here. It is, right now, my top five favorites of the year. It's definitely not my favorite release of the year so far. And even when you put this against other Lamal fragrances, it's not gonna be my favorite. I still favor the original. If you go vintage, it's gonna be amazing. And of course, Lip Parfum from a couple years ago uh, is definitely my favorite from the Lamal uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier lineup of fragrances at this moment. But this, definitely a solid you know, release of the year. And I think you should definitely get your nose on it. Don't blind buy this, especially if you have fragrances that are kind of like what I described here. This could be redundant in your collection if you already have spicy, you know, amber sweet fragrances. So try this, go to perfume.com, get a decant, live with it, make sure you love it. I know that's what I do sometimes when I wanna try a fragrance and I wanna get, you know, a full bottle because believe me, I don't review everything for you guys. I, re I review punctual things that I think would be worth your time. I do get a decant at perfume.com. I live with the scent to make sure I love it before pulling the trigger a lot of times. So do that, details below, discount codes, enjoy. Let me know in the comments if you are someplace in the world where this is available and you have tried, let me know your thoughts on the new Jean-Paul Gaultier Lamar Elixir. I'd love to read your comments in the comment section of this video. Check out the description for savings, for codes, all things fragrance, I make your life easier, that's what we do here. And of course, if you haven't already, show support to the channel, and I will see you right back here with another video very soon. Take care.